Reishi Mushroom is quite well known as the hub of spiritual potency and it's been used as a spiritual catalyst for an incredibly long time, for thousands of years. But the term hub of spiritual potency is something that is really quite commonly misunderstood. I mean, a lot of people tend to think that it's some kind of spiritual drug or some kind of spiritual power up or something like that, where they can just take it and it's going to make them more spiritual or it's going to provide them with spiritual experiences and it's going to, you know, create a sense of enlightenment within the, the consumer of reishi mushroom. And this really isn't the case. The way in which reishi works upon us and facilitates in our, our own personal development is really what I, one uh, thing that I mentioned in a, in a video I made on the health benefits of reishi mushroom. It's the fact that reishi is actually a saprophyte. So in its natural wild ecosystem, it's growing on dying and dead trees and it's breaking that organic matter down into very fine humus that is building the soil of the forest and it's actually nourishing and feeding into and supporting and providing protection and immunity to all species that exist within that forest. And in much the same way, when we consume really good quality reishi over the long term, Reishi actually works within our mind, within our consciousness, in much the same way. It actually works on those darker areas of ourselves, areas that we often try to avoid, areas that are really acting as obstacles to our own personal development and our progress on the spiritual path. So Reishi actually works kind of as a saprophyte in helping us to break these obstacles down into a much finer kind of conscious matter, a matter of, of dark matter of consciousness that we can actually work more easily with because it's not such a large overwhelming problem and so we can actually navigate it much more effectively and much more smoothly. So Reishi's not really, it's not really doing anything to us, it's not really giving us any kind of spiritual experiences it's not providing us with visions necessarily. What it's doing is just supporting our own innate ability to navigate the spiritual path. It's actually helping us to do what we're already capable of doing, but we are finding it quite difficult. So Reishi is really a spiritual catalyst. It's not uh, a spiritual drug that is just propelling us down you know, towards enlightenment. That's really not at all how it works. Now... It's obviously going to be much more effective if we're already on a spiritual path, if we already have a daily spiritual practice, if we're already well acquainted with working on ourselves, if we're already trying to, you know, transform ourselves, if we're trying to change ourselves, if we're trying to grow and actually make progress, then Reishi is actually going to be able to, you know, facilitate that progress and actually propagate that progress much more easily. Now Reishi actually works on our consciousness at a very deep level. It's it's really not at all uncommon for long-term users of Reishi to, you know, talk about experiencing much greater states of clarity, to have much more depth to the to our states of awareness and to experience feelings of equanimity and just peace and tranquility and to be less divided in the way we relate to the world and to other people and to actually have a much more all-encompassing view of the world. And, you know, th this is all something that we can experience in the waking state, but also something that's very, very common with reishi over long-term use and something that's been documented for an incredibly long time is reishi's ability to actually kind of show up in the dream state while we're sleeping and to actually allow greater clarity and greater mindful awareness in the dream state and how lucidity and developing lucidity and, and maintaining lucidity in the dream state can actually become um, something that is supported by long-term use of Reishi. And this is really very important because in... In a dream, for example, if we become lucidly aware, 
then we can understand that this is just a dream. Nothing in the dream is actually inherently real. It's nothing is inherently substantial at all. And when we understand that and we can rest in that awareness, we begin to relate to the phenomena of dream in a very different way. We begin to uh, not emotionally react to things that are happening in the dream. We begin to be less affected by things that are happening in the dream. And rather than just being a kind of victim of the dream and just reacting to things happening in the dream all the time, we can begin to contribute to the dream. We can begin to create the dream. And so we can develop this relationship with the dream where we are resting in mindful awareness and actually becoming the creator of that dream reality. And this can really carry over into the waking state because we have developed through practice a familiarity with not reacting to phenomena in this divided dualistic state of either grasping after things we want or being averted by things we don't want. We can actually cultivate in the dream state much more easily than in the waking state the ability to relate to phenomena and relate to experience in a more all-encompassing, less divided, less dualistic way, and we can begin to experience a kind of a seamless unity of experience, which is really the, the goal of all spiritual paths. And it's much more easy to cultivate this kind of awareness and this kind of experience in the dream state than it is in the waking state. So Reishi Mushroom really helps us in this way, and if we can develop this kind of uh, dream work, this kind of practice, meditative practice in, in the dream, then we can carry that over into the waking consciousness and begin to relate to this physical world, the, the phenomena that we encounter while we're awake, in, in a very different way. We begin to relate to phenomena in a less divided way, just as we do in dream. And we can begin to understand that our experience in this waking life is actually not as concrete as we first thought. It's not as inherently real or inherently substantial at all. It's actually no more real than the dream. And that we are creating this reality moment by moment through our previous conditioning, through the, you know, through the karmic traces that we've uh, activated throughout every single experience we've ever had and the way in which we've emotionally reacted to those experiences. So we can really begin to open up the potential of our consciousness through meditative practices during the waking hours and while we're asleep and in the dream state. And yeah, Reishi Mushroom can really propagate this whole process. So this is really, in my experience, how long-term use of reishi can really act as um, a spiritual catalyst. And I think a really good example of how this works on a spiritual path, in a spiritual context, would be a teaching known as the Mother Tantra in the very ancient Boon tradition, which is the um, really the original indigenous spiritual tradition of Tibet that predates Buddhism in Tibet by a very, very long time. And despite its very ancient origins, it's a very sophisticated and very complete spiritual practice. And in the Mother Tantra, they basically divide the development of our consciousness into four main categories. And the first category is really our vision or our view or the way in which we perceive life, the way in which we perceive our experience. And if we can cultivate a less dualistic, less divided perception of life, then we can really begin to create our experience much more than being affected by it, much more than being constantly emotionally reacting to it. Because when we are operating from a very dualistic mind, like I said, we're either grasping after or emotionally attaching to things that we like, that we have a preference towards, or we're trying to escape from or avert ourselves from experiences that we don't like and we really don't want to you know, have those kind of experiences. And this is really the root of suffering. And if we can kind of unify that, that seamless unity of experience, 
then we're reacting less to reality and we're actually able to create reality more. When we can cultivate that kind of perception, then we go into the second stage of consciousness development, which is action. It's the way in which we're acting in our day-to-day -day life, the way in which we're interacting with people, with, with, with the world, with, with the universe, with everything, with life. And if we're interacting with life from that perspective, then our actions are going to be much more altruistic. We're going to be contributing many more beneficial things into life that can be benefiting others as well as ourselves. Now, the third development of consciousness in the Mother Tantra refers to the dream state. Now, obviously, I kind of explained the dream state already and how we can, you know, really make uh, personal progress through the dream state and really advance down the spiritual path. And in, in the Boone tradition, what they're basically saying is the dream state is very much like the intermediary state of consciousness after death. So, you know, we fall asleep and it's a kind of intermediary state of consciousness until we wake up. Now, in, in, in the Mother Tantra, it's saying that the moment of death is in much the same way as, as sleep. It's like a kind of intermediary state between the end of this life and the beginning of what's coming next, whatever that may be. So uh, it's, you know, it's said to be infinitely more intense, the experience of that intermediary state after death than the dream state. But really the dream state and, you know, that, that whole consciousness throughout sleep is something that is the closest we can get to that 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 bardo state that state after death that's the closest we can get to that state throughout this uh you know this physical life this experience that we're having right now in life so through cultivating meditative awareness through the dream state we're actually preparing for the fourth and final stage of the development of our consciousness uh, according to the mother tantra which is that that state of after death, that after death transitory state. So that's that's something that we can't practice. Really, we only have one opportunity in this life or in this death to actually experience that and navigate that after death experience to the best of our ability. And so all we have to prepare for our death ultimately are those first three stages of development of our consciousness developing our perception, developing our actions, and developing our dreams and our, our ability to remain lucidly aware in the dream state and actually begin to meditate during those experiences. So through those three stages of consciousness development, we can actually prepare throughout our whole lives from this day until that moment that we die, and we can really stack the odds in our favor that we're going to be able to navigate that moment of death much more smoothly, much more effectively, without being tossed around left and right by the, the very dramatic uh, experiences that are likely to unfold and the, the kind of emotional states that we may be experiencing at that time and we're going to be much less drawn to or averted by those experiences and we can just rest in that seamless unity of experience and navigate our way to whatever's coming next and so ultimately to wrap it up uh, that's really from my perspective how I see Reishi Mushroom as a tool that can really support this kind of spiritual practice, which really is the practice of a lifetime. So people that think that you take Reishi and suddenly, you know, you're very nearly enlightened because you're taking the hub of spiritual potency. No, you really need to be engaging with a spiritual practice on a day daily and nightly basis for the rest of your life. But Reishi Mushroom really does have the capacity to support development on that path.